Welcome everyone to the 2022 Bantam A Cup Championship game here at Minto Stadium in Nepean. Today we have the 6 and 2 Canada Knights playing against the 8 and 0 Cumberland Panthers. Thanks, Mark. It's Larry Ring here with Mark Willett uh, doing the play-by-play -play and color commentary for the Bantam A Cup Championship, the last game of the TYSN weekend. Great job, by the way. Shout out to Jesse Card and all his TSN people. It's been uh, and we've had some great games to go along with some some great live streaming and some great some just some great individual football. So as Mark said, the these are the top two seeds in the Bantam Division. Two great coaches in community football: Nate Dunlop in Canada. Danny Durand with Cumberland, and probably, arguably, the two best quarterbacks of this age group in the city, Ashton Chartrain with uh, a good running quarterback, good arm, and Mackie Holmes. Uh, Ashton sorry, is with the Panthers, and Mackie Holmes, brilliant young quarterback, a great runner, great arm, uh, was, a, was on the OSFL team last year, the Cumberland Panthers, that went to the semifinals in the province. Ashton was as well, but Ashton played defensive back. Mackie Holmes, an excellent quarterback from Brockville, and he plays on the Canada Knights. So this is the last championship game of a heavy, heavy weekend for Encafa. A Cup championships, there's there's four of them, the U10, the U12, U14, and U16 divisions. Cumberland Panthers have been lucky enough to have teams in all four games. So far, they've won two of them. They've won the U12 and the U14 championships in Canada has won the U-10 championships. Both of these teams are looking to add to the to the championship trophy case going home today. So Mark, this is the rubber match then. The, uh, the Panthers are two wins. Canada's one win, and Canada's win was against the Panthers. So it could be a two and two day for two teams, or it could be three and one for the Panthers. What do you? Any predictions? Yeah, I mean, you always want to assume that the undefeated team is going to continue their pace towards championship glory. But, you know, it's been a long season. These are full rosters by both teams. At this age group, the U16 group, a lot of these players have been playing football for 10-plus for years. You know, you can't count anybody out. And I know for a fact that the coaching staffs on both of these sidelines have their players prepared, and there is going to be things that we have not seen so far in this Encafa season. So if I had to make a pick, I would pick the Cumberland Panthers to come out ahead, but you wouldn't see me putting money down on, on Leo Vegas for this one. So no bet 99 bet for you today. So the one interesting thing is they played each other during the season, and Canada jumped out 24 nothing, and the Panthers roared back to make it 46-24. I'm saying if the Panthers are going to win today, the key to victory is keeping Mackie Holmes in the pocket so he can't run. And the key for Canada is to start is to stop the two-horse backfield of McKinney and La Rosar and Cumberland. So here we are prepared for the opening kickoff of this great, great last and Kappa matchup of the season. Canada number two and number 23 back in the backfield to return the kickoff. Canada number two is Dexter Dunlop. Canada number 23 is Elliot Wee. Returned by Dunlop. Sees a lane on the inside. He's tackled by the Panthers. Number 55.
Alright, pass the tape, Reed. Pass the tape. Pass the tape. Stacked offensive line for the Panthers, deep in their own end zone. Hands it off again to McKendy. First down for the Panthers. Shalom, Shalom McKendy is a first year player in this age group, meaning he's a 14 year old. He's the younger brother of longtime Star Panther player Fabrice McKendy, who now plays down in the NCAA. Shiloh's a big, hard nosed runner who really finishes his runs. They're going to lean on him and Marvin LaRosaire today to run the football quite extensively. Hard to see what that was. Probably a jet sweep to Mark Pierre. Mark Pierre is an excellent receiver, quick. He's their jet sweep guy generally. Great job by uh, Kanata of pushing the play in. Looks like second or nine and second and 10 for Cumberland. around their 14 yard line, second down. Hands off on the inside. Number 98. Number 98, Ethan Shazla. Gains about three or four yards on that play. It's gonna be third down. Looks like the Panthers are starting the game. It's a little bit difficult for us in the booth to see over there as it's getting dark and the lighting. But there's looks like they're starting with a big fullback in the backfield and try to pound the ball on a power run. Short punt. Looks like there's going to be no yards here. Catch by Kanata. I did not see a flag, though, Mark, but that definitely was no yards. Uh, and that would be a, a ball in the air like that, so that would be a 15-yard penalty. But it looks like they're not calling it. We're watching the replay here. Catching it on the run and very close. The two Panther players are retreating, so they got a break there. But Kanata's got the football on the 29 yard line of the Panthers. Shotgun formation, first and 10. Mackie Holmes waiting for the snap. Motioning Dexter Dunlop back to the backfield. Just a quick draw, just a quick handoff to uh, only a game like about one or two yards by Dexter. It's going to be like second and nine. Tackle is made by number 98, Ethan Chaslis. Going to know what to make of any of this. It seems every single play is a different permutation of backs. Left number 45 comes around on the end around. Larry, I think I think that may have been a touchdown if, if the running back would have made his block there on the Panthers. So that's technically not a jet sweep; it's a fly sweep. Coming to number 45 for Kanadi. He's coming around here. We had a really good play by Parker Glover and Derek Duran, who's an outstanding linebacker. Parker Glover finishing it off. It's going to be third down. It looks like about five yards. But Kanata's going for it. He's gone for it a few times here. Again, Mackie Holmes is in shotgun, ace backfield. Oh. Well, we saw this a lot last game, Mark, with some. Fumbling the footballs by uh, by quarterbacks on uh, on snaps and things like that. That was a crucial turnover here because Cumberland had evaded a channel. You know, I mean, Canada was moving in. I don't know if they're field goal guys. That's a heck of a hit there by the defensive lineman from from the Panthers. First and ten, Panthers. Looks like Mark. We're at what the thirty-five yard. It off, straight up the middle, met with everybody on the defensive line from the, from the Knights. 
It's carried by number 25, Marvin LaRosar. He ends up getting perhaps six yards on that play. I wonder on that last Canada play, I wonder if the quarterback and the running back got confused on that. It seemed like the quarterback wanted to hand the ball, but the running back didn't want it at all. Be curious to hear what that play call was. Second down, four yards to go. Hands off again to LaRosar. This time he's met by half of the Canada Knights defense. Right at the line of scrimmage, perhaps loses half a yard. Third down in a sensitive spot on the football field. Panthers don't want to turn over the ball here in their own zones. Looks like they're going to be punting, Mark. Third and five, third and six. Two returners back for Canada. Bit of a high snap. Nice punt, nice and high. And we got a fumble. Panthers recover on the 40 yard line of Canada. Nathan Yell, as a defensive lineman, got that fumble recovery, but a really nice kick. Kind of a little difficult to see, Mark. It's not fully dark right now in the lights. That was one of those uh, big, big play. Panthers have flipped the field, first and 10 Panthers. This is the kind of momentum shifting play the championship teams take advantage of. First and 10. Pass to number 88, Dion Moak. Seems to have found a good little bubble out there on the outside flats. Gained about two yards on that play. Gains about five yards on that play for second down. This kid scored 17 touchdowns this year uh, between receiving and returns. An electric football player, uh, great feet, great speed. Number 88, Dion Moak, lines up at receiver most of the time. First down, Panthers. Ashton Chartrand rolling out. He can run. Ashton Chartrand, good athlete, hard runner. That's Cole Telfer. Cole Telfer is a, a player from the Canada area who played on the Cumberland Panthers varsity team this summer. He plays both receiver he plays both receiver and kicker and defensive back for Canada. Very strong football player. Third and one. There he is. Shiloh McKinney's been doing that for a number of years. Not only does he run hard, but it's he may he finishes runs. The definition of that is the first guy tackling him is not the first guy trying to tackle him. Is not the first guy who usually tackles him. Extra effort there, got the first down, I believe, Mark. So we've reached the end of the first quarter. There's no score up on the board. Hard to say that either team is dominating the other at this point. Offensively, both teams have shown that they can move the ball down the field. Defensively, both teams have shown that they can step up. Stop. a look at the crowd as dusk falls here at the Minto Play Stadium. It's 21 on the 21 yard line here for the uh, on the Canada Knights. 21 yard line. Panthers have the ball. Chartrand in the shotgun. Looks downfield. Tosses it up. And it is good. It is a good touchdown. Number 88, Dion Moak. Well, we were just talking about Dion. He caught the hitch earlier. Now he goes deep with his deep threat speed, running away from the DBs. Great throw by Ashton Chartray. One thing about Cumberland is they have a strong offensive line. They have three or four kids who played on the varsity team this summer who didn't start but got valuable experience as backups and are really playing very well. Max Vivier, Logan Cohen, Joseph McKnight, giving Ashton a little bit of opportunity. So no good, six nothing, but Mark, 
this Dion Moke kid, he's an ele- I had a, the privilege of coaching of coaching his cousin this summer, and I know you did a lot of Panther varsity games this summer in the booth, and you saw that guy, Heaven Moke, just absolutely tear up the OSFL. This Dion Moke is a little bit bigger, actually, uh, a little taller, but a very exciting player. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see a few more hitches thrown his way tonight. It'll be interesting to see how the Canada Knights respond. We don't want to say this is an early touchdown. It's, it's into the second quarter, but it, it feels early. It feels like this game has just started. It feels like these two teams are still feeling each other out. And I think we're about to see an opening of the playbooks here on both offensive sides of the ball. Kick off to the Canada Knights. Oh, big tackle. And a flag comes down, London Perron on a big tackle. Flag comes down right in front of him though. Hard to know what the referees are thinking here. Kick off all the way downfield. Uh, yes, okay, so we see number 45 from, from the Knights a blocking from behind. He actually pushed the Panthers tackler, London Perron, into the ball carrier, Dexter Dunlop. This is, that's like insult to injury. You you actually block the guy from behind, drive him into your returner so that he makes the tackle, and then you get a 15-yard penalty. So, <laughs> these are the things they can't really take here, Mark, because this the, the, the Canada's got a long field now. And the one thing I do know about the Panthers' defense is they have several playmakers at linebacker and defensive back. So it looks like they're where, Mark? Are they on the 20-yard line? 19-yard line. First and 10. Mackey Holmes at quarterback in the shotgun. 20-yard line, actually. Looks like an empty backfield that Canada likes to motion. This is a run look when they motion here. They do like play action, and they like to get Mackey Holmes out. Sort of an inside counter draw. Nice tackle there. I'm not sure who got that tackle. Francis Campbell, he's an inside defensive halfback for Cumberland. That was a nice play. Came up. Limp. Dexter Dunlop is not the biggest kid, but he's very shifty. He got good wheels, very quick. Nice open field tackle. Limited that to one yard. Second and nine for Canada. From their 21 yard line. Mackey Holmes still in shotgun. Dropping back, looking deep. There he goes. It's a corner route. For Cumberland? Roger Zion, who plays a lot of safety and halfback, but mostly safety for the Panthers. That ball hung up there just a little bit too long. He's got to try to get that ball to the other shoulder. Sorry, that was Oliver Raymond, number six. Ollie Raymond, not, not the biggest kid, but a terrific football player. Nice high angling punt towards the sideline. There's Heaven Moke with the ball. He's dangerous every time he touches it. Sorry, Dion. I, I said Heaven because I saw Heaven run a lot of about 20 touchdowns this summer, uh, Mark. Looks like about the 39 or 40 yard line of Canada. Cumberland's going to have the football, but there's a flag on the field. Usually in this instance, it didn't look like no yard, so it's probably a block from, from the behind or a holding. Going to push that ball back now to. Uh, the 50-yard line. The Panthers are going to scrimmage the ball from the 50-yard line of Canada. 6-0 Panthers, 10-17 left in the second quarter. But they're coming out in a shotgun formation. Quarterback Aston Chartrand, shotgun. They got one back in. Toss. 
There goes Mar Great run by Marvin LaRosaire. Again, another varsity player this summer who was not a starter, but got lots of playing time. We got some bo good blocks, and he takes it from outside. But he makes a great cut. Puts, puts his foot down, makes a great cut. Two blocks from receivers. Marvin's a very, very uh, tough runner. He's all elbows and knees. Very tough to, to bring down. First down, Panthers, 29-yard 20, line of Canada. Looks like a jet sweep to Mark Pierre. Very quick feet. And you might be very close to a first down. Mark Pierre is an excellent receiver, great route runner. Good hands, but he is their jet runner. Dion Moke will run it, but Mark Pierre is an excellent, excellent uh, jet jet runner. You saw there, he got 11 yards. Shotgun formation again, first and 10, Panthers. We got Marvin LaRosier again. Close to a first down again. Take a look at the re We're getting lots of blocks from Panther. Uh, they're sealing the edge. Looks like they might have got away with one there, Mark. No, they did count. Okay. There was a block from the behind there. Not a necessary one. I think Marvin was still would have got yards, but nevertheless, they're going to bring it back 15. A long first down. First and 20 here for the Panthers. Comfortable spot on the field, though, for them. Chartrand in the backfield. Shotgun formation. McKendy carries the ball. Makes the first tackler miss. The second tackler, not so lucky. A loss on that play. You see the toss on the left-hand side. Makes this first tackler miss. Contains him inside, though. The second tackler does his job. The halfback comes across. Great form tackling in there. Finds some friends. Brings him down. Loss on the play. Second down. Rolls to the right side. Doesn't see anything. Chooses to take the ball himself. Looks for the sidelines. Out of bounds. That is not going to be enough for the first down. It's going to be about six or seven yards short, it seems. This is what Ashton does very well. If he breaks contain, he's a really good runner. Strong runner. And he's not afraid. He's not afraid to take contact either. Lowers his head there. But I think they're short by about five yards. I don't like to kick field goals, I don't think, in this game, Mark. Both offenses want to go for it. That looks like a first down. Very, very tight. Good surge by the offensive line there. They got low and drove it. That was McKinney with the ball. That's a great one-two punch with McKinney and LaRosar. A first-year first year player and a second-year player. Now we have a dog on the screen. First and 10. Actually, I don't think they can get a first down. I think it's first and goal. There he goes. Hard runner. Got inside the five, but got stood up. Marvin's a hard runner. Like I said, he's a, he's a taller running back. He's all elbows and knees, and he's coming at you here. Looks like he gets to the four. The question is, do they stay with LaRosar and, uh, and McKendy on the ground? Second and goal. Oh, 
Oh. He only got one yard there. Canada sent some pressure, and they sent the pressure at the right spot at the right time. What do you think, Mark, here? It's going to be third and goal. I'm pretty sure they're going to. Nope. Looks like a field goal. I think a field goal might be the right choice at this portion of the game. Remember, they did miss the convert. So it is only 6 nothing. It's not 7 nothing. We don't we don't want the Canada Knights to march back and score a touchdown, end the convert, and then be down. So I think the Panthers are going to try to go for the almost guaranteed points here, get themselves in a more comfortable position. It is a fake. Carries it around to the outside. And he gets the corner of the end zone. A little trickery. Well, I think it was Derek Durand, because Derek is the field goal kicker and linebacker. Nice move at the end there. That was a big play. Push the score to 12 nothing now, and they'll go for the extra point to make it 13 nothing. Gutsy call. Derek is not a running back, but he's a linebacker, but a very good athlete, very strong kid. Made a good, strong move on the one-yard line. The Panthers having trouble with the extra points, so it's going to be 12 nothing Panthers with five minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the second quarter. So as we approach the last few minutes of the second half, you can bet the Canada Knights are a little bit, sorry, the first half, you can bet the Canada Knights coaches are looking through their playbooks, trying to figure out what they might be able to do to break something open against the Panthers. They've been successful running the ball. There's no doubt about that. They just haven't been able to convert the third downs that they've needed to. Well, Mark, I, I've been impressed with, with Mackie Holmes, the way he can throw the ball. You know, Dexter Dunlop, number nine, Liam Samir. Bodie Thibodeau made the great one-handed catch. Jacob Lalone, 65. I've seen him make a couple of very good blocks on the offensive line. So it's there. I think Kanata's, uh, they've got the talent. There's the kickoff, all bouncing all over the place. Watch out for this kid. Yeah, Ryan Creep makes the tackle. Dex Dunlop on the return. Canada's going to have the ball on their 31-yard line. These are tough. These are tough plays, Mark, when the ball's bouncing around like that. It's not a basketball. It doesn't bounce straight, right? <laughs> That's why there's lots of fumbles in football. Canada Knights take over on their own 30-yard line, first and 10. Familiar backfield. This time nobody motions in. It's clearly a pass. And now he, oh, he tries to carry the ball himself, but he's met with resistance. Goes nowhere. So I think this is what the Panthers have to do, anyone would have to do to be successful against Mackie Holmes. He likes to get outside the tackle box. You soft rush him, bring him back inside where you have help. With kids like Ethan Chassels and Nathan Yell and Max Brune, they got a good defensive line with the Panthers. They got to keep him in the pocket. He's a very, very talented athlete and a dangerous quarterback. Second and about 12 or 13. Ace backfield, Mackey in the shotgun formation. Panthers sending a blitz. There he goes again. He wants to get outside. Just was talking about the D-line. Mentioned Max Brunet as one of the three guys. He just made that play. The key with Mackie Holmes is to stay on his upfield, outside shoulder, force him back in. Excellent play there because he wants to run that football. This is a big one now, Mark, with uh, three minutes and 48 seconds to go and Kanata punting from their own. 20 yard line. If Dion Moak back, high short kick. Ball out of bounds off 
Panther hands. The football is going to be first and 10. Panthers on the 46-yard line of Canada with three minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first half with a 12-0 lead. Mark, I would say this would be a very critical, critical drive here for Canada to stop because the Panthers get up by any more points. It's going to be very difficult to come from behind. Right, Larry. It's a, it's a difficult position to be when you're a player and when you're a defensive coach. You know that you have to hold the Panthers. You can't, you don't dare go in to halftime three scores down. Panthers pitch to McKendy to the right hand side. He's met with almost no resistance. Finally brought down comfortably into a first yard, first down territory. Maybe a gain of 18 yards on that. It's a first down. Well, you can, that's, this is a first year kid in, in this Bantam division. They got that one two punch. Just a quick, quick toss, reads the block, puts his foot down, drives it inside, and look at how he finishes. Look how he finishes those drives. That, that's a very talented 14-year-old running back. There he goes. There he goes again. Down inside the 10-yard line to about the 6 or 7. Mark, you've seen him for many years with the Panthers. He, he's, a, he's a level 1 running back. I've seen him. I've seen his brother. I've seen his dad, um, all of them, fantastic athletes. You know, the I want to being a receiver coach myself. I want to give credit to to some of the uh, downfield blocks that we're seeing here by the by the Panthers backs. There's nobody standing around watching this play. I'd be surprised if any of these receivers are seeing what McKendy is doing as he's marching down the field because they're engaged in their own one-on-one battles and they're winning them. Pitch again to McKendy. Oh, this time his cleats give out on him. He slips down, doesn't quite make what he wants to see, loses a couple of yards in the backfield, and it's going to be second and goal on about the Canada Knights' 13-yard line. Nice play by William Robinson. He knifed in there and uh, enforced McKendy to make a quicker move than he wanted to. Big play now. It's second, uh, what do we got, second and 12? Second and goal on the 13. They've pushed them back a bit. Aston Chartrain, shotgun. Ooh, tried the jet sweep. It looks like DeMarc Pierre, usually a sure-handed. No, oh, that was Dion. They're their two jet guys, Dion Moak and Mark Pierre. That was Dion Moak's first jet. Mark, Mark Pierre's ran a couple. Unfortunately, they had a, uh, had a fumble there, but it looks like uh, they're going to go for it here. Uh, Third and goal, they're going to go for it. Either they don't trust their field goal kicker or they feel they can score. One of the two, I'm not sure. Ashton dropping back. We've got an open receiver. What a catch. What a catch. Number four. Number four, Mark Pierre. <clears throat> We've mentioned how what a great route runner he is. Ashton Chartra drops back. Perfect throw, right shoulder. That's an outstanding catch. Outstanding catch by Mark Pierre. The the thing with the Panthers offense, Mark, is they have some weapons at receiver and they have weapons at running back and they have a decent offensive line. I was just going to say their their extra point game is not the greatest, though, so far. Looks like that somehow went in, uh, even though Derek Drummond slipped. So it's 19 nothing for Panthers over the Canada Knights. Yeah, Derek Durant's foot came out from under him, but he somehow got it over there. We're in a situation, Mark, where Canada's got a minute and 55 seconds. They have to get drive the ball down. Even if they don't score, they've got to flip the field here and not give the Panthers another opportunity this half. The worst thing that can happen right now with the Knights is a, is a two and out where they have to punt immediately to the Panthers. The momentum at that point going into the half is going to be all Panthers. Let's see what the Knights are able to pull together here. Dunlop on the return. Fights through a couple of tackles, drops down. You know, we've, we've seen now a few plays where uh, 
the the field may be acquiring a bit of dew out there where some players are slipping down. Dunlop picks up the bouncing ball, never the easiest thing to do. Moves forward, it's first down for the Knights on their own 42 yard line. And here it is, a minute and 50 seconds left in the half. Mackey in the shotgun, looks to his left, rolls, throws into the flats, it is caught. Not sure, not sure those short passes, Larry, into the flats are gonna get you what you where you want to be this late in the half. It's tackled by number 24, Cash Hickey from the Panthers. It's second and eight. Mac Mackey's a very accurate passer. Um, I think they're going to try to get him outside, and uh, they've got to be careful though here, the Panthers, because he can. He's got a ter terrific arm. He's unfortunately a couple long ones they have hung up, but he can throw the ball forty yards on a dime. In the shotgun, ace backfield. Got a tight H receiver. Dropping back to pass. Oh, that looks like it's going to be a pass interference on the Panthers. Oliver Raymond, I think, is the uh, pass was for Cole Telfer. Mackey's dropping back. He had time. Oh, a little bit rushed at the end. Ooh. Looked like a very, very good defensive play, but he might have had his back. Uh, Oliver Raymond's a ter terrific defensive back. Might have had his back on the receiver. Nonetheless, with a minute and 17 seconds, the Canada Knights have now moved into Panther territory. Mackey's in shotgun. A motion from zero box to two guys in the backfield. Tight slot on the boundary side. There goes Dex Dunlop on a quick hitter. Like I said, it's tough to run on that D-line. We got number 98, Ethan Chassels. We mentioned his name a few times, Mark, today. Uh, Ethan Chassels and Max Brune on that defensive line. Seems like the defensive line is going to be the key to a Panthers' success here. They have stood out. You know, the, the Canada Knights offensive line, you know, they're no slouches. They got some big boys out there. Just not able to win the one-on-one -on -one fights so far. Second down, nine yards to go for the Canada Knights. Out of shotgun, looks to his left, throws downfield. Well over the head of the receiver, incomplete. And it's down to one, one play left for the Canada Knights in this half. Looks a bit, again to be looking for Liam. No, that was for Bodie Thibodeau. Bodie made that great one-headed catch early in the game. That was a little over his head. Third down now, Mark. Doesn't look like they're going to be punting. With 36 seconds left, and they don't. Well, I don't know. It, it, this is a gamble. I, I mean, it, there's not a lot of time left, but the Panthers get the ball back here. Mackey's in that shotgun formation. He got pressured from behind. Good coverage. That was London Perron, I believe. Number one, London Perron. London gets a few more inches on him. He's a next level football player. Only 15, only 15 years old. That was terrific coverage. Great throw, a great attempt. Panthers now have the football, though. I think they have both timeouts. And they have the ball with 30 seconds to go. They don't really kick field goals, so, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, they might be putting the ball in the air here at some point. Ashton Chartrand is a good runner at quarterback, good physical runner as a quarterback. 
In his career, he's played quarterback, running back, linebacker, safety, corner. Kind of a really all-around great football player, but second and eight right now for the Panthers from the from their 51-yard line. Timeout has been called by the Panthers. We've got 20, 23 seconds left on the game clock here in the second half. Obviously, the Panthers want a minute or two to talk about this to see what might be possible. What they don't want to do is they don't want to give the ball over to the Canada Knights and give them one more shot. I would imagine they would try to keep the ball on the ground at this point. From center. Pitch LaRosa to the short side of the field. That's a 15 yard gain for him. And it's a first down for the Panthers. Oh, there is a flag down in the offensive backfield. There it is, a little bit of a hold. One of their receivers held on a little too long. Again, I, I don't know if it was a play that impeded the run, but it was a hold. Pushes the Panthers back now. Well, Mark, you can throw the ball down the field or you can run a quick hitch and try to get yards or just run the ball and get out of the half up 19 nothing and live to see another day. You definitely don't want to be turning the ball over at this point for either a bad snap or a, an errant pass or a tip ball. I'm thinking that uh, Marvin LaRosier might be careful. Looks like they're in a passing formation. No. Incomplete. 11 seconds to go, and Kanata's going to take over on downs. Oh, third down. Sorry, my mistake. Well, I don't. They probably have to. To uh, they're gonna punt. They can't. The, the clock was stopped, so they can't run it down. Good punt towards the sideline. Good bounce. That's what you want when you punt. You want to get that ball around the numbers. Uh, for you watching on the on the live stream, you want it around the numbers which is close to the sideline, which means your contain team can encircle the returner. It's much more difficult to, to return a punt from the balls on the numbers. And if it's not on the numbers, it bounces out of bounds. There's no return. they got seven seconds left, Mark. Is they, do they kneel or do they chuck it downfield? Well, knowing these uh, players and coaches the way that uh, we do in this city, it's a, it's a small community. I think that the Canada Knights are going to want to take advantage of this opportunity. And I think they are going to take their shot. Drops back. Let's his, oh, a screen pass. Short to Dunlop. Flag flies. In the defensive backfield, he's brought down. He does get a first down. That doesn't matter. And a second flag is thrown after the tackle is made. So we have two penalties here to sort out before we can get ourselves into the proverbial locker rooms. So the half can end on a penalty that, um, well executed screenplay. I'm, I'm trying to see on the, I think there was a holding penalty or a blocking in the rear penalty for in the first penalty against Canada. Second penalty might have been on the Panthers. I'm not sure. We're going to pick it up. Regardless, I think Canada's being pushed back quite a bit. There might be a warning. I didn't see the second flag mark. I, I didn't see what happened there, but I, I obviously it was... Not on the Panthers. Not sure. The refs haven't come and made any indication of what the two calls were. A 
coming into the game, I, I, I did a little background, and Kanata was a, a hitch screen slant team. And if you saw the very first series, they threw some slants, they threw some hitches, but they got away from that. They haven't really run hitches or slants since early in the game, and they that was the first screen they've run. I think if those were the things that got them there during the season, I think they're going to have to go back to that in the second half, Mark. Um, <clears throat> so two URs against uh, Canada. Um, they're going to blow it. They declined the penalties. The question is if those URs, uh, Mark, do they not count? Uh, uh, and. A person cannot get two URs or they're thrown out of the game, or is it three URs? Do you know? It's three. No. So we're at half now with the 19 nothing Panthers lead. We're just watching the replay as you are. Oh, there was an elbow on a, 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 by number 78. Jacob Graham. And I came flying in with a WWF move. So it's 19 nothing halftime score. Beautiful crowd, beautiful weather, jam-packed here. Mark, is it $5 beer night here? <laughs> if it is, Larry, you're going to have to show me where that is immediately after the game. This has been, this has been a long weekend for all of us. Uh, we're just in, running into the last two quarters of this amazing and coffee event. We're going to be... Uh, 17 degrees. Look at that. 17 degrees, November 6th, 6 o'clock at night almost. This is fantastic. Take a break, everybody. We're going to come back with the amazing second half of this game right after this.
And Kaffa A Cup Championship for the Bantam U16 age group. Canada Knights behind the Cumberland Panthers by a score of 19 to nothing. Cumberland receives the kickoff, and it's going to be first down for the Panthers. Panthers first down on their own 51 52 yard line. I think the Panthers, Mark, they're going to come out here and do what they did, a, a steady dose of uh, Shiloh McKinney and Mar Marvin LaRosere. 
with a, maybe a couple of draws in there and sprint outs to Ashton Chartrain. No need to get fancy at this point until they stop it. Well, snap issue. Oh, there's an injury. That could be a critical. Uh, you hate to see a kid grab his back or his hip. Well played by Canada. Ooh. All three of us in the booth here had a, uh, <laughs> a big ooh all at the same time. Second and long for the Panthers. Dion has to go off the field. It's a big series for Canada to kind of uh, keep the Panthers here. They got them in a passing situation now. Sometimes in these second and 15 situations, you do look for a quarterback draw, screen. We have a flag on the play. It might be an offside. Ashton Chartrain running. Looks like he only got back to the line of scrimmage. Got to check the flag. Flag was just as a snap, so it was an offside on someone. So against the Panthers, probably declined by Canada. It's going to be third and long. Panthers will be punting. I like to see these punters, especially when they're on the left hash mark, angling the ball to the numbers on the out of bounds. You don't want returners catching that ball too far inside. Gives them too much opportunity to find holes or walls set up by the return team. Panthers punting, good snap. Good kick just outside the numbers, but it was... We had a collision there on the sideline. Kick was a bit short and a quick bounce. We may have an injured Canada player on the play. Ball was a low kick. Canada player did a great job of scooping it and running. That's number 33. Woo. Dylan Miller. We get a number on the tackle? Didn't get that number. It's hard to see those Panther numbers from this far side of the field. Canada first down. Maki in the shotgun as he's been 95% of the game. Like to see them go hitches, slants. Oh, he's going to try to run. As I said, that's what you've got to do to Mackey. You've got to keep him inside the tackle box. You've got to keep him inside the tackle box. Liam Bougerou, the fourth member of that fearsome foursome up front for the Panthers. But Derek Drummond flying in untouched on the side. There was a missed block there. Puts him in a second and, as they say, Mark, second and par three. Looking for a screen, there it is. Well set up, well set up. And they're gonna get, there's a first down. So as I mentioned, they're a screen hitch kind of team. That's the second screen they've run, Dex Dunlop, big yards. Successful too, I mean he squeaks out of the backfield, there's nobody there with him, he's got his two big hoggies in front of him, protecting him. Both of them make critical blocks, and eventually Dunlop is brought down by number two, Francis Campbell for the Panthers. Big gain into Panthers territory. First and 10 on the 46 yard line. From the shotgun, another screen backside. Number 15. Number 15, Josh Peters. Canada Knights sure like the short stuff and it seems to be successful for them. This is what they're known for. 
Really nicely set up. Slot screen just slides out. Like I said, screens, hitches. This is their MO during the season. Why change it? This is what got them here. I like to see them stay. Screens, hitches, a little bit of Dex Dunlop and some slants. That was Quinn Armstrong, the ball carrier. Looks like about a gain of three, three and a half. Second, six, second, and seven. The ball's on the 29-yard line of Cumberland. Passing situation. Now, they're always motioning Mark back and forth all over the place. Dex Dunlop moves into the backfield. Ace backfield, shotgun. Two backs now. Another screen. Picked up this time by the Panthers. Nice play there by the Panthers. That looked to be number 51, Frederick Barrett. This is a kid who is in his first year as a Panther. He's actually from uh, Castleman, Ontario, just about 30 minutes east of Ottawa, and has never played much real organized football, but the Panther coaches think that this kid's going to be a superstar down the line. Big, fast. You saw him close in on that one. Third down and four, critical play. Mackey looking to run. Can't let him outside. Can't let him outside. That's where that's where he does his damage. Looks like the chains will be moving. First down, Canada. Faked the handoff on the jet sweep, but then took it around the corner himself. Put a shoulder down to get in the extra yard or two that was required for the first down. Great heads up play. Now first and 10 for Canada. This is exactly the kind of opening drive that they needed. Mackey once again in the backfield. Taking control of his backs, putting them where he needs them. Hand off to Dunlop up the middle. Has a couple of Panthers on his back. Gets down to about the 11 yard line. Seems to be a gain of about four yards. And second down. Comes around the outside. You can see him number 95, Liam Brugeru. He eventually makes the tackle on Dunlop. Second down on about the 10-yard line of the, Canada, of the Cumberland Panthers. Mackey in the backfield has Dunlop beside him. Fake handoff, comes around the outside. Makes it across the 10-yard line, but he's brought down by Panthers number 50. Ryan Creed on the tackle. A, a really nice ball fake by Mackey. He's got, Mackey's got excellent speed. I would have liked to have seen him kick it outside here. Get that ball. Get that ball in his outside arm so he can use his straight arm. Francis Campbell also in there on the hit as well. He's he's played he's had some really good hits today on both defense and special team. Looks like third and three mark. They can get a first down, I think. Mackey dropping back in the shotgun, looking deep in the end zone. Intercepted. Francis Campbell, we were just talking about him. He's made a couple of really good plays on special teams. A couple of hard hits on defense, and he just came up with a big interception in the end zone. That's a turnover that's going to hurt. I like Mackey to step back. I, I coached Mackey last summer, and I'd like him to step back there and follow through on that ball instead of throwing it off his back foot. If you throw on your back foot, that ball hangs up, and it's short. I think he was fairly well covered there as well. First down, Panthers from the 20-yard line. First and 10, Ashton Chartres on the shotgun. There's Marvin. Hard running, hard, hard running by Marvin LaRosaire. That's going to be a first down, Panthers. 
That's about an 11-yard gain, Mark. Mark, I believe that Marvin's been a Panther since he was um, uh, seven years old. He started in the in the in the Mites, I think, or the Junior Panthers, Little Panthers, and has played every year since. Yeah, the Panthers are unique in the city that we introduce tackle football to players. At least we did, but a few years ago, at kids as young as six years old, Marvin was one of those players in our Junior Panthers program, and you can see how much he has taken from that program. Again, with the ball, carries across the line of scrimmage, is met by the entirety of the Canada defense, doesn't get a whole lot on that play. Maybe gets three, three yards. It'll be second down, six or seven to go. You have to think that that last series where the Canada Knights marched all the way down the field only to turn over to the Panthers, you have to think that that's a heartbreaker. They... They seem to have the Panthers' defense figured out, only to make that crucial error right at the end. Second and five for the Panthers. Chartrand in the backfield, hands off to LaRosa again. Finds an open seam right down the middle of the field. 15-yard gain, and that's a first down for the Panthers. That's the thing I like about Marvin. He's a he's a tall back. Hits the, hits the hole real hard. Really good run. Finished that one off really well. Look at that power up the middle. Of course, lots of room. The offensive line did some good blocks. Finishes the run hard. No one's, The first guy is never, ever tackling him. Sometimes the second either. Quinn Armstrong in there being tough. Kanata plays that real well. It's a toss to the weak side. Never a big fan of a weak side toss. Shiloh had nowhere to go. That's what you want to do on defense is string string the offense out to the sideline. You don't want those running backs heading north-south, which is straight up the field. That was an excellent play by the Kanata defense. They strung him out to the sideline. Looks like we got second and 13, second and 12. Probably a passing situation for the Panthers. Batted down. Was that the big man? Number 58. That's Quentin Dorsanival. I don't know if that was him or not, but uh, let's check the uh, replay. Yeah, he went up there high with his left hand. Really, really nice defensive play. He's a big boy. Wouldn't you say, Mark? He's sort of the prototypical defensive end kind of kid. Panthers are punting. Short punt. And out of bounds at the 50-yard line. So the Kanata is going to start first and 10 on their own 50-yard line. One has to think that the Kanata Knights are in a situation with two minutes and four seconds left in this third quarter and down by 19 points. You have to think that this is an absolutely crucial series of downs for them. Starting near midfield, they've had success marching the ball all game long. They just haven't been able to finish and get into the Panthers' end zone. Let's see what they pull out on this first and 10. Mackey in the backfield, summoning his backs to him again. Panthers' defense showing blitz. They send two linebackers. Ball is caught. Oh. Initially caught and then negotiated out of his hands by the Panthers defender. See, he drops back, tosses the ball. You can see number 34 does make the catch. You can see right here he does have the catch, but then it's forced out of his hands by the Panthers defender just as he comes down. I didn't get that number, but that was a great play. Again, I, I think that pass has to be a little bit not hang up there as long as now it's second and 10. Really big play to try to get a Mackey drop. There's a screen again. Dex Dunlop, he picked up a good 25 yards on that play. Parker Glover on the tackle for the Panthers, number, number seven. So they've run, Mark, four screens, and every one of them has worked. One got a call back on a penalty, but... 
the Panther defensive line has to feel you got to feel the when you're getting in there too easy. Someone has to make a feel, and the linebackers have to feel they're way downfield, far too long, far, far too far downfield. But again, I like Canada. They are a screen hitch slant team. That's what you got to stay with. Mackey in shotgun. He's again. He break contain. He can run all day if you don't get him in contain. That's a hell of a run by Mackey. That's Ollie Raymond. That's two teammates from the provincial summer team this year. Cracking heads. <laughs> You watch the defensive ends and the defensive tackles for the Panthers were too far upfield and not enough upfield, the defensive end. That could be a shoulder or neck. Uh, yeah. Uh, anytime there's anything with the upper body, the head, you've got to be really careful. What I'm, what I'm trying to say on the, on the Mackie Holmes thing, you can see how deadly he is when he gets outside the tackle box. You have to soft rush him, go to his – outside shoulder and force him inside you got to stay a couple yards outside so that he can't get outside you and you saw earlier the panthers were doing that and sacking him and now they're getting probably tired they're not getting there and Mackey's getting outside first down from the about the 20 yard line 18 yard line for canada motion their guys around ace backfield with dex dunlop in the backfield shotgun formation Yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, well covered by the Panthers there. Didn't get the number. I'll look at the replay. Frederick Barrett, we talked about him, the kid from Castleman, who the coaches feel is going to be a really, really good football player. Uh, that would have been a tough one to catch. Uh, Frederick was all over him. That's the last play mark of the third quarter. So we're heading into the last, I was going to say 15 minutes, but the last 12 minutes. And we had a 19-point lead. Is can that have a little bit of a, a hill that's too hard to climb? It's hard to say, Larry, but I think I, I think Canada's got a really, really tough road ahead of them here. Three scores against the Panthers defense that has been stingy all season long. I'm not sure. In fact, I can tell you for a fact that the Cumberland Panthers have not given up three scores in a quarter this whole season. And I don't think there's any reason to think that they're about to start right now. Back in the backfield, looking at the screen again. Once again, successfully open. However, he has two waiting players for him. Does gain some yards on it. Not quite the 20-yard gains he's been seeing so far, but... Does gain about four yards, and it is third down on the Panthers' 15-yard line. Pretty crucial, pretty crucial play here for the Knights. You have to think that if they don't score this series, that they're not going to be able to come back from this. Mackey in the backfield with Dunlop. Very familiar formation. Sends all his players forward, rolls to his right, decides to run the play himself, run the ball himself. He gains the first down and is forced out of bounds, so it will be a first down for the Knights. There are two flags on the field. It looked to me there was some procedure at the start, but I, I'm not sure. We'll have to... So it looks like Oliver Raymond is back in, like he didn't get hurt too badly. Uh, there's that old Mouchoua sur le terrain that I hear a hundred times at Red Blacks games. Um, looks like the penalties are on the Panthers. Not sure. Look like there was a procedure, but maybe not. But again, you've got to keep Mackie Holmes inside the tackle box. You let him out. You saw his speed. You saw his little hesitation move. He's got great feet. Um... This is a critical draw, critical call here because this was third down and about six. No. 
So Panthers were offside, and we have a holding call on Canada. So I believe they play this play over with five yards back, Mark. Is that the... Uh, Probably the biggest third and 11 that Canada's had this year by a by country mile. Panthers got to keep him inside. You got to look for the screen again. Mackie Holmes in shotgun, drops back. He wants to run. Too much run and gun. Too much run and gun. He, he's 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 so good of a runner and an athlete, but those guys were covered down there. I mean, we we've, we've got to make plays. Thought he could have run that a little bit. Here's the look at this fantastic move. Not not many kids can can make this kind of move and get back in full speed. No, he was he was kind of cornered. Thought the receiver could have kept running there. That's just a big mistake at this young age group. I'll tell you, Larry, this is actually the first time that I've seen Mackey play a whole lot. Uh, he's a fairly new player to me. Uh, I'm impressed. I, I, think, I think he's a fantastic football player out here. He's doing everything he can to bring his team into, into the Panthers' end zone, but he's just not quite able to be there. I'm excited to see what he has up his sleeve in the years ahead. Here we have our smallest fan. Doesn't seem to be too terribly interested in the goings on in the field, though. Second down. Ball is fumbled in the end zone. Sorry, in the in the uh, in the backfield rather. Larosar is able to recover it. Reflects a major loss. Pushes the Panthers all the way down to the 10-yard line. This is the, the this is the Canada's chance now. It was a bit of a bit of an Aaron toss. Marvin lost it. He's gonna where is he down now at seven eight yard line? Panthers have to kick it. I Mark, I would right now if I was the Panthers, I'd give up the two points and kick it off and 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 have the um, Canada start the ball way down here. Otherwise, the they're they're not uh, they're not going to do it. And a return. So it looks like they're getting the ball down to the. Dylan Miller scooped that up. He got the ball down to the thirty. Sorry, twenty-four yard line. So as I was saying, you give up that two points and you kick it off, the Canada Knights are going to be way down here and have a very long field to go with still having to get three scores to win. Uh, with they would have a, There would be a 17-point lead. Now they're in a very good field position here to have another crack at it. Mackey's in shotgun. Terrific athlete. He just can't try to do too much here now. He's, he's got other weapons. We haven't seen Liam Samour, number nine, lately. He's going to run a lot now. Hard to see in that far corner. Looked to be a little bumping going on over there. We'll have to see the replay. Hard for us in the booth up here to see the plays in the in the far corner with the darkness. See as he looks down downfield and it was a worm burner snap, but you can see that that Panther defender just got his hand up just in time to knock that ball away. I thought on the original play it may have been a screen where he may have uh, put his hands up without seeing the ball, but it does appear that he turned his head around just in time. The drops back, sends all of his receivers downfield. Here's the screen again. Incomplete pass. Rare incomplete pass on the screen for the Canada Knights. I don't know if we have a replay of that one, but the Pan the Panther player there, the defensive end or the outside linebacker. Look at that. Terrific job of, of reading it and, and falling back and making the play. 
Not sure who that is. Again, I'm very hard to see the Cumberland numbers from here. This might be it, Mark, with uh, eight minutes to go. And uh, second and long. Mackey might use his legs. He can really run, really, really run. We can't tell. He got the touchdown. Terrific run by Mackey Holmes. So I've been saying all day uh, to really got to keep him inside. You watch the defenseman, again, going inside, not going to the outside shoulder, not being disciplined, breaks outside for a touchdown. You go in, you go outside two yards, he has to step up where you have help. 19-6, and they're going for the extra point. You know, Larry, as we watch the Canada Knights go for their extra point here, if you watch the replay, we saw the, the pursuit angles from the Panthers were all off there. Everybody was aiming backwards behind the ball carrier. Single point convert is good, which means the score is Cumberland Panthers 19, Canada Knights 7. You know, Mark, you, you asked me about this kid, and I coached him this summer with uh, the OSFL Panthers in the Provincial League, and uh, it was really unfortunate. He had an ankle sprain. He had a kind of a, a long COVID strep throat kind of thing, and he missed a lot of time. But as a as a first-year kid, he, a 15-year-old kid in that league, he really, you can see his natural talent. The ball comes out of his hand really nice. His speed, his feet, he's still young. He's just got to understand that he can't do it all himself. But right now he's willing, willing Kanata back in this game with his feet. And if the, if the Panthers do not... You know, and what happens as the game progresses, if the game as the game progresses, the D line get tired and the linebackers get tired. And Mackey hasn't run that much until lately. They may have to have him, they may have to go back to screens, hitches, and Mackey running to get back in this game. We're looking maybe for an onside here. Yeah, a little too far. And the Panthers get real good field position. Not sure again, seven minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. I don't know what kind of kicker they have. I think it's Cole Telfer, so I know he can get the ball downfield. You know, you get the ball downfield, you gain 20 yards. You know, Ryan Schmidt, uh, uh, Mike Schmidt, one of the coaches, that's his son. Ryan is an excellent football player, smart, great blocker, makes smart plays. Obviously, the guy you want on a hands team, short kicking, he's the kind of guy that's always going to help you. I would think the Panthers here now. It's going to get interesting. They can't just run the ball, but I, there it goes. Look at the push from that offensive line. Marvin got nine yards. He didn't get touched until he was six yards downfield. Look at that. It's just, uh, boy, he hits the hole with a lot of uh, intensity, a lot of passion. That is not the great cup. Mark, that is not the Grey Cup or the Vanier Cup. Cup. That's the Dean Cup. There you go. I'm not even sure. No, what I'm not sure what the Bantamay Cup is, actually. Should know that. The Dean was the Pee Wee. Another good run by Marvin. Panther offensive line really firing off the football, Mark, and, and pushing the Kanata D line back. So, Larry, the, uh, the individual trophies are named after the past presidents of Encapa. So all the A-Cups are named after the immediate past president. This this time around, it's Steve Dean. Previous to him was Sid Gilchrist. So Sid Gilchrist, he's previously uh, president of Encafa. So those are the B-Cups. And uh, Wayne Chorney was president before him. So that's where the C-Cups are named. First and 10 for the Panthers. LaRosar streaks around the outside. Picked up. Perhaps a short loss on that play. He's picked up by number 14, Kalen Sharon. Oh, look, on, look on the replay here. Yes, yes. So uh, you would you would think that he would have uh, blocking out there by the receivers. Doesn't seem to have happened. Does seem to gain a yard on the play. I'm surprised at the spot of the ball there. Second down, nine yards to go. Sending the backs downfield. 
looking to pass, throws it downfield into a lot of different players from both jersey colors. And there's a flag on the play. Offside is going to be the call against the Knights. So we'll move that up five yards. It'll be second down and four yards to go. That was an, uh, uh, you know, I know Ashton quite well, so he, he would know I would say that. That was an ill-advised throw. At this point in the game, you don't need that. Ashton can take off with the ball. You can run with Marvin, run with Shiloh. You can run jet sweeps. You can throw hitches. We I don't know if we've seen Dion Moak come back in the game since he hurt his hip. He's their big play kid. That's a smart play. Four yards to go. Good hard run. That was Marvin. He's Marvin's the elite back in this league. I mean, there are some good ones. Dex Dunlop, I find, is a very good back for uh, for Canada. Very good. Better than I, I assumed or thought, uh, which is only an assumption because I haven't really seen him play that much. But I, I, he's better. That he's good. He's a good back. And Marvin, no, Marvin has the size and the strength. First down now. That old line's doing a great job for the uh, for the Panthers. Standing shotgun, going back to Marvin again. Looks like a, again, first guys don't get him, but it looks like we had a pretty good play by one of the, uh, number six, was that Cole Telfer? Cole Telfer on the hit. Cole's a, he's their kicker, receiver, plays DB. He's had a heck of a game for them this, today. again, another kid I coached this summer. Uh, didn't play a whole heck of a lot this summer. He was behind a lot of older kids, but has really uh, shone today. And uh, Coach Nate Dunlop says Cole's been an exceptional player all year for them. Second down and seven. Marvin, nice little cut. Great hit. That's Quinton Dorsanville. He's been in there a few times today. Slides off his block. Offensive lineman did not stay with his block long enough. Inside zone plays, you got to stay with your block and climb up to the next level, or you you, you allow a defensive lineman to come up and give you a smack, which happened there. Nice play by Quinton. Third down. GGs are in, sorry, the uh, Panthers are in a punting formation. And they're running it. What a gutsy move. It does not look like he's going to get the first down. Late fumble. Not sure he got the first down here. He needed about seven. Nice cut. Great tackle by Xavier Tellier for Canada to stop that from being a first down. Very good play, number 40, Xavier from, from Canada, keeping them in the game. Three minutes to go. First down, Canada. I would say this is a drive that they got to get points on. Mackey drops back, looking to... Whoa! He really aired. He's got a strong arm. He aired that out. Maddox Sabo on the receiving end. That's a big play they needed. Here's the replay, folks. Maddie looks off. Mackey looks off. Aired it out beautifully. That's how you want to throw a long ball. You want to put lots of air under that. Let the receiver well covered, but just an outstanding catch. We haven't seen much of Maddox today, but... Uh, that was an excellent catch. First down. Inside Panthers territory. Mackey dropping back in the gun. There's Liam Samir. We haven't seen him since early in the game when they hit him two or three times. This is a kid who's his first year of playing 
tackle football, which means he's played touch football, but never tackle football. Mackey put it in there really nicely, but look at Liam go up and get that ball. Wow, good vertical, two hands, and then gets an extra seven, eight yards after the play. They're now down to the 21, 22 yard line. Mackey looking wide open on the flats. There he goes, looking in the end zone. I hope we see a replay of this play because, and if, because we ha you have to take what the defense gives you. Look at number five in the flats. You throw that ball to the flats. You're getting 10 yards in a first down. You're moving the chains. Now you put yourself in second and long. Good play again by, uh, I think that's Ryan Crete, 51. Second and 10. Just over two minutes left. Mackey in the shotgun. Long pass. Whoa. It looked like Maddox was a little bit open there. Pass was a little bit a little bit off, but a pretty good pass. That's a long, people don't understand how, how far that throw is from this hash mark all the way to that corner. So this could be it, Mark. We got third down and 10. Two minutes and six seconds left. Perfect time, though, to run a screen. Perfect time to run a screen. Looks like a timeout is called on the field. Give, the, give both teams a little bit of time to think about this. The Panthers have stopped the clock here. Interestingly, the uh, both teams seem to be up to their own devices here. Canada has some water boys in there, and they got a coach teaching them up, trying to figure out what the best approach here is. Have to agree with you, Larry. I do think the screen really is the only call here. It's worked for them so many times. Be a little bit disappointing to see them try something else at this point. And here it is. Mackey in the backfield. Dunlop beside him. The entire team moves up. No screen here. Taking their shot. Bounces off the hands of the receiver and it's incomplete. That is probably Probably going to be takes his shot deep downfield. Double coverage. Not surprising that he's not able to pull that ball down in the end zone. Ball's turned over. Panthers take over. And all it's all about ball control now, Larry. Yeah, it looked to me like there was another receiver open and another receiver also ran too tight to a receiver. You want to have a little spacing. The spacing there wasn't great. Mackey didn't have a ton of options. He was looking for Liam Samur, who's been a, a, a good target today. Here's a run by the Panthers. Getting up almost close. That could be Owen, um, Owen Mina. He's their third back and uh, plays some receiver. He's a very good player. Um when you can bring a guy like that, he's fresh now, and the Canada uh, front seven has played a lot of football against a good O-line and a couple of good running backs. Second and two. Looks like he got the first down, though, I think. He just had to cross over the 30-yard line. We have some fans who aren't happy with the, uh, he definitely got over the 30 yard line. He got up to about the 32 yard line. Ashton's a, a big quarterback, tough runner.
Canada, Canada still has two timeouts, but it's a uh, one more first down mark, and it might be uh, turn out the lights. The party's over. Ashton the shotgun. With Marvin, nice cut. Looks like we might have a horse collar or a face mask there. That's 15 yards and another first down. So, um, time is time is not in uh, Canada's favor right now. You know what though? You know what, Mark? I really Canada's defense is hung in there because 19 points and two of them were long passes, right? They've they've hung in there against a pretty good O line and a couple of good running backs. I, I was impressed with Kanata's offense, but I, if I would have seen Kanata run more screens and more hitches consistently through the game, I think we'd have a little closer contest than we have right now. I think you're right, Larry, and I think if these two teams played again next week, the result may be different. Um, here we are, Panthers up. Hand off of the backfield to LaRosar. Marches down, get, gets about six yards on the play. Larry, I, to me, I think the difference in this game has been the two offensive lines. I think the Panthers' offensive line has been nearly flawless. And I think, I do think that the Canada Knights' offensive line are slightly discombobulated with all the different formations and all the different permutations in the backfield. I think that may be the one core difference here. I don't know if that's the case. I, I think the Panthers have a very good old line. Jacob Lalonde is a good O line, and it's hard for us to see up here how the O line is doing. But uh, Jacob Lalonde has impressed me for Canada. But this is a strong. I mean, Marvin's getting Mar Marvin's getting five or six yards downfield before he's getting hit. If that's a first down now, it's uh, it's going to get tough here. They still have two timeouts. They still have two timeouts, so you can't knee it out. Well, they just took one. I've been impressed with the caliber of play, though. I mean, this is, uh, these are 14, 15 year olds, and there's a lot of first year kids out there who are 14 years of age. Uh, Dex Dunlop, the running back for Canada, number two. He's a first-year kid, Mark, in this uh, age group. He was the MVP last year of the Pee Wee A Cup. Uh, first-year kid, not the biggest kid, but he is. He played a very good game today, running the ball and on screens. Liam Simure for uh, first – he's not a first-year kid, but first-year playing football. Very, very impressed by him. Uh, Quinn Armstrong, number 45 on defense – has made us some crucial plays. He's a first year kid. So they've got some they've got some young young guys in there who are going to be back next year. Uh, but the Panthers have a veteran team with a lot of kids who played summer football, summer provincial football this year, including Marvin who is a very tough runner. I think he's he's proven today that he's a next tier 1 running back. We have 22 seconds left on the clock here. It's second down for the Panthers. Canada Knights do have one timeout left. Clock marches down here. Seems like both teams are resigned to their fate. Panthers are going to take a knee here. There'll be one more, one more play. Panthers do have to take that knee, and that's it, folks. Your 2022 Dean A Cup champions, the Cumberland Panthers. Strong, strong game by Cumberland defensively and offensively. I think they did a really good job on on Mackie Holmes for the first.
game against somebody from the Montreal region. Um, it's going to be an exciting game. It's always it's always an interesting matchup when the Encafa champions go visit the Quebec champions. It's a different brand of football that they play over there in Quebec. Be interested to see where these two teams end up next year, of course. And kids love cameras, eh? What do you think? Now would not be the time for that little dog to walk in front of the camera. That, it, he might be even smaller dog if he walks through there. Because a, a dog wouldn't want to walk through a pack of panthers, would he? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, who's picking the MVPs, by the way? Is it, is it we are? Oh, okay. I did not know that. I was here last game and didn't pick them. Okay. We're going to have to have a little debate on that. Mark uh, has thrown a few names, and I disagree with both of them. No, actually, I don't, actually. Uh, pr pretty easy to kind of pick the MVPs today. Um, I would say – are we allowed to announce them now? No, no. Oh, okay. I feel, like, I feel like a kid at Christmas. I want to say it. All right. All right. I'm going to go back to Mark here, and we're going to wrap it up and uh, do the MVPs. Some happy faces here, the Cumberland Panthers. Long, long season for these guys. Okay. And here we go. We're going to have the uh, MVP trophies announced. First off, to the Canada Knights. Number seven, Mackie Holmes. Goes to the quarterback, number seven, Mackie Holmes. He had a fantastic game, fantastic series of plays there. He did everything he could to get his team on the win column, but just didn't. Just just couldn't get there. I mean, number two, Dexter Dunlop, also a fantastic player. Would have been an excellent choice as MVP. Now we'll have the announcement for the Cumberland Panthers champion MVP. No doubt on this one. Number 25, Marvin LaRosar. Ran 100 miles up and down that field today. Wonderful, wonderful game by this young man. Excited to see what his future holds. Now we're going to give out the Bantam A Cup, Dean Cup, championship trophy, and they're presented to the captains of the Cumberland Panthers. See Ashton Chartrand, quarterback. Logan Cohn, the center. Derek Drummond, linebacker. Marvin LaRosere, running back. London Perron, defensive back. I would say that's a pr pretty good collection of six kids. Nice picture with Steve Dean, past president, and namesake for the uh, trophy. Careful, Steve. There, you're gonna get you're gonna get rocked in there. It's been a while since Steve played football. He's gonna get rocked. <laughs> So congratulations. This, you know what? What an amazing day. Congratulations to both teams. Also, big big shout out to TYSN who did an amazing job. I watched a couple games at home. 
uh, on YouTube and uh, been here for the last three games today. Uh, thanks to Mark Willette, who helped me out here. My first time ever doing play. We kind of did, if you didn't notice, we, we neither one of us have ever done really play-by-play, -play, so we kind of did play-by-play -play in color at the same time. Uh, congratulations to Canada, Nate Dunlop, well-coached team. So we're going to sign off now. What a night. Packed house at the Minto Field. I think uh, the, the Mark, I'll let you sign it off because you've been around the cafe a long time, but I would have to say that this was one of the better – Better championship weekends we've seen in a long time. Obviously, the weather helped. What do you think? You're absolutely right, Larry. Too many, too many times the, the too, too many times the Encafa championship games are mired by, by sleet and snow and wind and cold. Fantastic week here. Can't wait to see what happens in the provincial and interprovincial championships next weekend. Good night, everybody. We'll see you in 2023.